Cookville City Council meeting to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilman Anderson. Present. Councilman Woodford. Present. Mayor Swallows. Here. Vice Mayor Epps. Here. Councilman Albright. Here. All present. Thank you. Would everyone please stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. Consider approval of agenda as presented. Do we have addition subtractions from the agenda? Uh, we need to pull item 11. All right, item 11. All right. All right, do we have a motion for approval as amended? So moved. Second. All right, any questions? I'll vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Thank you. Item 2, we have a presentation by the Cookville Putnam County Chamber of Commerce. Mr. George Halford. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, Mr. Shipley, everybody. Uh, Three minutes, we're, George. We're going to eat. No, I, Mar, <laughs> Mara just told me that. That's impossible. She, she told I me know that's minute. impossible. Uh, yeah. We're going to eat a little high on the hog one more time. I'm going to give you, Laura's going to give you a very brief report on our hog rally and then a merchandising project that we have. And just want to say again how much we appreciate the partnership uh, uh, and uh, as exhibited by the hog rally. Uh, uh, Chief, they were rock. Uh, the police were rock stars during this period of time. What a great program, uh, Tony! Uh, thank you for helping out, and, and, and the whole city crew getting the fairgrounds and other things ready. But we're just uh, we're just really excited. It shows you what we can do uh, to bring more visitors and, and leave leave these dollars behind. I'd like to call on Laura Canada if I could, Laura, to come up and just give some numbers uh, about the hogware, and then we'll talk about the merchandising project. All right. Well, I think um, I think George. I'm not sure if you mentioned there was about 2,700 attendees. Uh, there were only last year about 700, so it's almost a four-time increase, which was huge. And um, with that said, by the hotel numbers, and of course, you know, we'll sales tax and that sort of things delayed a couple months. But just by the hotel numbers, we know that um, Friday. And Saturday night, there was about an 80% occupancy in our hotels, which is phenomenal, which was about a 78% increase over last year, same time, which this is a time that we've heard from our hoteliers that it's really um, a low a downtime. Memorial Day weekend, there's not really a whole lot going on as far as people, they're traveling away, so it's good to have people traveling to Cookville. And then revenue was up like 84% over last year on Saturday night. So as hotel hotel um, tax numbers, so, uh, or just revenue overall. These, you do have a copy of this on the back of that sheet. And I wanted to read three quick testimonials I thought really stood out from, we've tried to collect the testimonials just from people in general, from businesses and that sort of thing. But Really quickly, to the rally committee, the Chamber of Commerce, and all the people we met over the past four days, thank you for making Mary and I feel so welcome. By the way, this is a comment by the Australi an Australian couple who traveled far. <laughs> the southern hospitality we were given has made this trip from Australia worth every cent we spent to get here. Wow, isn't that awesome? We both agree this has been the best hog rally we've been to. We've been to, we've made many new friends and hope some of you can travel down under. Thank you, everyone. This is from a person from Hendersonville, Tennessee. Home from an incredible rally. Over a thousand miles added to my bike and a new respect for Cookville and the rest of the Highlands area. So just and one more uh, a woman from Clarksville one thing I must say this was the coolest state rally we've ever been to thanks for a great time it all went too fast didn't have enough time to do everything we wanted a must go back to place thanks rally committee and Cookville so again that residual effect of people coming also heard um, 
I think it was from Gary that there's a group from yeah. from yeah. what city? Yeah. <laughs> Knoxville. Yeah. 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 Not Knoxville, I think Knoxville. that they are going to just bring their chapter back because they didn't have time to do everything. So they're going to bring them back in the fall. So just again, the things that you just hear and people are going to really who never may have heard about Cookville. So it's pretty neat. And also for the first time ever, the um, the uh, Harley Corporate um, s- actually awarded the Cookville community with the coveted Rally Knife. Ooh. And this is, yeah, I'll pass it around if you want to. Um, it's called really the, the, um, the Rally Knife Award, and it's a custom-made knife. It's um, on, normally only given to an individual. It's ever only ever been given to an actual person for their impact on the rally. This was the first time it was ever given to an actual community for hospitality and for all their support. So we thought that was a, a pretty big deal, and we're excited about that. Um, and now on to, we come bearing gifts as well. And so uh, one thing we've just had a lot of demand for, and y'all probably have too, um, or city employees can probably attest to this, that we get a lot of calls for people who just want to take something back to their wherever they came from that says Cookville. <laughs> and so we've had so many requests that we just felt like there was a demand for it. And so Molly and George are passing out um, I Heart Cookville mugs bumper stickers and uh, shirts that say cook Vegas <laughs> so um, we'll have to have you hold them up for a picture but we do have all this merchandise now available at the Highlands Visitor Center hoping that it will also draw more traffic and create more awareness of the Visitor Center so now you'll have to hold them up so everyone can see and Molly will get a picture just give that to Molly yeah. <laughs> Cover our face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not loud. <laughs> Should we stand? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> we'll squinch. Kathy, get in here. Thank you. And that is our presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I was going to ask why did, why did you bring George, but he had somebody had to hand the stuff out, didn't they? <laughs> I do want to say I, I met the couple from Australia, and uh, you know it's not just something that they were just driving through and happened to stop for a hog rally. <clears throat> you don't just drive through from Australia, but uh, he has had a lot of experience with hog rallies. So when he says it's the best he's ever been to, that's that's a pretty big pretty high accolade i think does he write for like the hog magazine in australia he either writes for him or he's in charge of hog rallies in a certain state in australia um it's one of the two i had a had a conversation with him and so it was pretty neat to to hear that so well the fun thing i'll just put my little two cents in i I think the fun thing about this is we, we we have the mechanisms the processes in place that allow us to do more of this stuff uh, and uh, if, we, if we find out we need another process or something else, mechanism to make it even better, we're going to do that. We've, uh, we've shown that we can do that, and, and I think that's a testament to, uh, to private, public interest working together. So I, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm looking forward to what's going to come next. Mm-hmm. I think, and I think it's just got, we have more to come. So it's an exciting time for me. Yeah. Thanks for the presentation, guys. And the, hard, and the hard work that you put in. Yeah. Thank yes, you, guys. I'll be drinking my coffee out of that tomorrow. <laughs> Football was surprising. <laughs> okay, on to, on to old business. Uh, item three, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on June 7th, 2012. A motion for approval. Of so moved. Second. Right, any questions? Mm-hmm. All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right, item four, consider on second and final reading, ordinance 120506, rezoning 730, 740, and 750 Blackwell Park from RS10 to LM Light Manufacturing, 
rezoning 761, 781, 790, and 800 Blackwell Park from CI to LM and rezoning 1601 Blackwell Road and vacant lot located on Blackwell Road from LM Light Manufacturing to CI Commercial Industrial Mixed Use. Sponsors, Mr. Ken Young. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this rezoning ordinance has two primary pur uh, purposes. The first is to extend the light manufacturing zoning to the west of Blackwell Park, and the second is to place a number of parcels currently with split zoning into one particular zone. This is the location map off Blackwell Road at the end of South Maple at 111. It's an aerial view. This is the existing zoning. This is another view of the existing zoning. You can see the zoning lines are uh, split over multiple parcel lines. This was the final plat that was approved for Mr. Parks in April 2009. And this is a proposed rezone in the legend there uh, to the left explains the, the colors and what's changing there. We have had uh, this approved by the Planning Commission and the Department recommends for the Council's adoption. We've had no calls or comments whatsoever since first reading. Thank you, Mr. Young. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any questions, comments from the Council? Mm -hmm. Questions, comments from the audience? All right. Seeing none, all vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Young. <clears throat> Item five, consider on second and final reading, ordinance 120614, amending title 18, chapter one of the Cookville Municipal Code pertaining to water main extension and connection. Sponsors, Mr. Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and council, this is the first ordinance that we had done some modifications on some language, trying to uh, clean up some language, and then we added the sentence uh, water main extensions outside the city limits shall be at the expense of the developer or property owner, which you currently read, except for capital improvement projects approved by the city council. I haven't had any comments or calls on this ordinance change and would recommend your approval. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Questions? Comments? Any from the audience? Yes, sir. Uh, Would you? Up here? Uh, either, either, either one. Stand by because I'm going to ask you a question. Right. Uh, uh, I went back and looked at uh, audits on the water department in 209, 210, 211, and then a thing called net cash in 09 they had $3.7 million. And then the next year they had five, and the next year they had almost $6 million. Now, I heard from the uh, Herald Citizen that they're due some kind of uh, increase. But I look at this like my mortgage. You know, you pay a, a little bit now and then a little bit every month, and then hopefully it all adds up. But, uh, you know, this is the last three, four years, this has been like the worst economy I've ever seen, and it looks like they're making more money every year. And uh, I just... Uh, I'm not a, like I'm not a CPA or anything, but I'm just looking at this stuff and wondering, uh, uh, what's the deal? Would you care to state your name, please? For uh, the... Danny Newton. I live at 1445 Hillsdale. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Mayor, Council. You know, a few years ago we did some rate adjustments looking at long-term projects, and the way we've done a lot of this in the past is build cash over time and then build projects, drop our cash down, and that's what we're currently doing now. I think we've got a $6 million water plant project that we're funding in-house, and we've built that cash up, and that's what we've done historically. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Any more questions? Any more comments from the audience? All right, seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. All right, on item six, consider, consider <clears throat> excuse me, on second and final reading, ordinance uh, 120615, amending Title 18, Chapter 1 of the Cookville Municipal Code pertaining to water connection charges. Sponsors, Mr. Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, this is another ordinance change that we have proposed and went through first reading. We have made a, a change in between the, uh, up in 
in, in between the two readings, and that's going to be shown in blue down here at the bottom. Uh, we've changed, and there it is for water connection charges within subdivisions where the meter system has been installed at the expense of the developer, including the box and service line of the customer's property, shall be one half of the above charge. That's the way the uh, ordinance currently did read. And we have changed that to $350, which we think will be able to collect our cost uh, during our conversations with you guys. Uh, we'd like to track that for about a year just to make sure that's a justifiable number, but we think it is. And would recommend your approval. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any questions, comments from council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Kelly, the reason we're tracking this, we, one of the reasons we talked about that is just to, is to ascertain if this is going to have a negative effect, what kind of effect it's going to have. And if, certainly if it has a negative effect, this can, I, not speaking for the entire council, but I know in my seat that I sit that, that we would certainly rectify anything that would certainly hinder development. So I think isn't uh, that's the reason that I'm going to vote this way. Uh, and I, pre I appreciate your department's going to be able to take a look at that and bring it back to us next year. Yeah, we took a look at it after the con some concerns came up since it was uh, written at half price yeah. and since the meter price was going up, it was going to increase that pretty much like, significantly. So we took a look at that and thought that's a reasonable request here. to do that. I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, when we, uh, <clears throat> I believe when we started out with this, <clears throat> we were looking at some numbers on uh, all the water connections, maybe water and sewer connections. Uh, I think it costs the city uh, $140,000, some odd, something like that last year. We took in about $80,000. Yeah, that's correct. That's rough. Some odd, numbers. yeah, don't hold me to, yes. I rounded up and down a little bit. But um, so basically we lost about $60,000 in connection charges and, and and that sort of thing. And so our, our goal here was was a break even point. And, and yes, so that's, that's, on, that's on getting the chart I it. gave you guys. You right. can see what we're collecting. We're, we're only recovering about 51% on the 5 inch, 56 on the 1 inch, and 54 on the 2 inch. Right. So that's, and that's, you know, the if we don't cover our costs, that falls back on the rate payers. And so, you know, the current customers will be basically paying for the new charges. And so we just want to cover our costs, is what, is what the, the goal is. I've got a question on, on item four on the water connection charges within subdivisions where the water system has been installed at the expense of the developer. Uh, I think we have changed that to 350 instead of one half. And I see in the audience that we have some people that are in the development. What is your, would any of y'all be willing to make a comment about that if for or against? Uh, is that going to impact you that much as far as your ability to do something within the city? Mr. Donnelly, you, that's your business. <laughs> I'm Tim Huddleston. Uh, I just make a statement that, uh, you know, maintaining that rate as, uh, as low as possible would be, you know, to your benefit. Otherwise, they're going to move to the county and then from the county to the surrounding county. So that's just only comment. I just minimize that as much as you reasonably can. Um, a $350 fee. How much increase is that actually, Ronnie? From 350. Well, it's currently 300 if you put a five-eighths inch meter. Right. So, you know, you're only looking at $50, and I think you're really uh, looking at opportunity, you know, trying to minimize that, and I think that's in the best interest. Thank you. Okay. And, uh, and just one more thing to point out, and I think we're all going through the same deal. You know, the, these are tough economic times in our, in our industry, development slash building industry. And, you know, every penny counts. If, we, if, the, if the increase on a house is $1,000, how many people does that take out of the market? And that affects every single one of us every day. All right. Thank you, Mr. Donnelly. Any other questions, comments? Anything else? No. All right. I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right. <clears throat> on item seven, consider on second and final reading ordinance 120616, amending title 18, chapter 2 of the Cookville Municipal Code pertaining to sewer connection charges. Sponsors, Mr. Ronnie Kelly. Okay, Mayor and the Council, this is the last ordinance change we were proposing, and it's basically doing with the sewer connection charges. 
uh, a change since first reading is in the uh, developer charges we had added in there to go to a half price charge we have changed that back to a $250 charge and that is in blue it's right here no it's on the second page right there Point out, I'd like to point out also, we've also required and changed the wording to before someone we would sell someone a, a plumbing permit, they would need to submit to our office a valid plumbing permit before we would sell them a connection and locate that connection for them, trying to correct some issues we've been seeing in town. All right, Mr. Kelly, I have a question on the 250 charge. How much of an increase is that over what is current? Oh, we current? Have, isn't this Sorry. another motion? No, it's just a question right now. We're, oh, okay. I yeah. thought we couldn't discuss it unless we had a motion. Yeah. That's right. Excuse me. Sorry. Let's make a motion. We'll discuss it. I'm, I'll make a motion to approve. A second. second. All right. Questions, comments? Uh, my question is on the... 250 charge, how much of an increase is it above what is currently? $240. $240. Currently, it's just an, if the developer installs the uh, sewer system in a, de in a development, there would be only, a, and a homeowner came in to purchase it, they would just pay a $10 inspection fee. We've taken, removed the $10 inspection fee and then added a $250 charge to help recoup some of our costs that we think we're incurring. Okay, so the developers spent all the money putting in the... That's correct. Uh, how do you all feel about changing that to uh, $50 uh, fee, inspection fee, instead of the 250 i I'll make a motion to amend the original motion to change it to $50 as opposed to 250 I second that. I have a question, okay. though. Okay. What do you, what do you do to inspect whenever you go out to inspect this? What do you do? Well, we have an engineer. Our engineer will uh, review all the plans. We have to approve the plans, submit them to the state. The engineer for the developer will submit them to the state, mm -hmm. and then we will go out and do the uh, visual inspection of the construction going on, uh, testing, manhole testing. Uh, we will go out and send. Uh, guys out to GPS the lateral locations. Uh, the developer will bring back a set of as belts. They'll check, spot check those, make sure those are, are complete. And I'm trying to think what else we end up doing. Guy will go out when somebody comes in and purchases it. A gentleman will go out, make that location, and mark it in the field and do that. And when you add all that up, we think we've got around that much cost in it. Are you going to be able to track this for another, for through this next year, like you are on oh, the can. water, yeah. <clears throat> and see if we are meeting our costs anyway? Well, I can tell you, you won't be meeting the cost for if you change it to fifty. <laughs> going to be how, paying more in gas than that. How close is two fifty to meeting our cost? I think you're close to meeting your cost right there at two fifty. Aren't inspections being done when the systems are being put in? Inspections by our engineer. That's so why, are we, why are we reinspecting? Doesn't need to speak out of order. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the cost that we're incurring. Sure that. If you're, it's my understanding, if you're a developer and goes to a utility district and puts in a water system, uh, like in Gainesboro Grade or, or, or Bangham Utility District, they're going to charge you a 10% of your capital cost up front for for inspections and everything. We don't do that. We just provide that service, but it, it's still a service that's uh, directly tied to that development. Does that make, I mean, is that? No, I understand. Okay. And then after that, you'll have, uh, they'll buy a permit, which will be in, in the codes department, and then they will go out and inspect the homeowner's portion that they tie into the, to their house. If 
if the fee that we charge, say it's say it is reduced to, or I guess it would be increased from ten to fifty dollars, and if that passes, um, and this does not cover the cost of that inspection, how do you make up the difference on that then? Oh, it's just spread out through the rest of your rates. I mean, so, you're, you're, you still have to have X amount of dollars to operate, so you will make it up in volumetric charges or something else. So as a, when I pay my sewer charges then on my bill, then part of that would go towards meeting the, the uh, difference as to what is paid and, and what is actually the cost of that inspection. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Because we have uh, connection fees, we have customer service fees, mm -hmm. and then we have volumetric fees. So that's the fee structure we use to collect from. Okay. Any questions, comments from council? No, we're voting on the amendment. We have to vote voting, on the amendment. Voting on the amendment. Just for clarity, we have an amendment. We're going to vote on the amendment, which is to uh, amend the original motion uh, from change it from a, uh, the fee to fifty dollars right. instead of two fifty. Instead of two fifty. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments from the from the audience. I'm prepared. I'm prepared to vote. All right. I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right, and then we need to vote on the original, the original motion. As amended. As amended. As amended. Any questions, comments? I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> I think we need no, a I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm glad somebody else is stepping up to the plate. <laughs> All right, I'll vote. Five yes votes on the amended motion as amended. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Okay, thank you. All right, on to new business. Hold a public hearing and consider on first reading Ordinance 120611, providing a tax levy for the 2012 2013 fiscal year. Sponsors, Mr. Mike Davidson. Mayor and Council members, uh, this ordinance does establish the uh, 2012 property tax rate for the city of Cookville. Uh, this ordinance uh, proposes a five cent property tax increase. Uh, the current rate is 85 cents per $100 of assessed value. The increase would uh, move it to 90 cents and that five cents would be allocated to the uh, general fund. Basically that five cents amounts to $345,000 in additional revenue for the general fund. The allocation of the uh, property tax rate would be 79 cents. The proposed rate would be 79 cents for the general fund, six cents for the debt service fund, four cents for economic development, and then one penny would go to quality of life fund. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have about the property tax rate. Do you have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Questions, comments from the council? Uh, we Sorry guys, we got a lot of paperwork up here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote no on the on the budget, um, uh, and I don't I want I want to make just take a bit of time if you, if you allow me the liberty to explain give my explanations why explain why um, tr truly uh, appreciate all the hard work that has went into uh, forming this budget, um, and I want to let my fellow council members that uh, this my no vote is in no form or fashion uh, meant to be divisive. Uh, towards, other, towards other council members and how you vote. Uh, 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 we do certainly have a difference of opinion on how it's fallen about, and uh, those, those differences, uh, while they shouldn't be divisive, certainly are important. Uh, just to put just in, very, in, just very simple, in just a very simple fashion, uh, I, I felt like in, for the entire year that we were going to have to have a tax increase with recent purchases that we've made and some things some stretches that we've put on our budget. Uh, we've been very blessed and very lucky in the city of Cookville to have, have, a, um, have, a, have, a, have a revenue stream, revenue fund that we did, we did well this year. Did, we did better than we have in years past. And that's a good thing. Um, I simply feel that, uh, that uh, I'm confident that Cookville can continue that and we'll, we will be able to uh, continue to fund some of these, thing, some of these things uh, as we have. Um, I want to make it clear that uh, 
my my voting to no on the budget has in no way, form, or <coughs> fashion uh, uh, speak negatively on some of the things that we are doing. Okay, I just simply feel like uh, specifically some of the uh, increases that we are doing for our city employees. I want to make sure that's clear. Um, it just simply comes down to our. For me, it comes down to our fund balance. Uh, and I think we have. I think we have the capacity to abs absorb that without a five cent tax increase. So, uh, I agree with the budget in total. I just, I guess, I just don't agree with uh, the the f raising taxes in order to fund it. That's all we'll say. Right. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Unless you want me to say more. <laughs> no, that's that's plenty. <laughs> that's, that's plenty. That's plenty. <laughs> um, I guess I'll I'll, I'll go next. I'm. Uh, the reason for my vote too will be a lot like Vice Mayor Epps said. I just feel like in the last two years with our budget, uh, we've made some pretty big purchases within our general fund uh, budget and still ended up with a little bit of a surplus and at the end of the year. And I won't go into all the numbers specifics on it, but uh, uh, you know, we were looking at maybe potentially taking out a bond for over a million dollars to purchase her Heritage Ford building, and we have enough cash to do that, so we're not going to have to borrow the money, which is a very good thing. And everything I'm saying here is because we have very good department heads that budget extremely well, and they don't just go spend money because right. it was uh, allocated to them. Uh, they still try to save money. It's not a use-it-or-lose-it city at, by any means. So, you know, with all that being said, we've done an incredibly good job with our budgets uh, and we've been able to put a little bit of a fund balance back in as far as the operating budget is concerned uh, with some large purchases the past two years still being able to do that. So, you know, with those things being said, I have trouble, you know, voting for the tax increase. Um, you know, we've also had a couple of things come through our town this year that's, I think, I mean, we just had a presentation on the hog rally, I think, that will bring additional sales tax revenue. We have a, uh, a religious convention coming up few months uh, that supposedly will bring a lot of sales tax revenue so I'm, I'm I understand the the reasoning behind it uh, for sure I really do uh, I, I think that yes we may need to look at that again uh, you know maybe next year but for right now I'm just not comfortable enough with raising that and that again speaks does not speak toward any of the other council members and how they they feel we all have a little bit of a different opinion how we get to where we're going uh, and that's fine that's what makes it balanced uh, so anyway, with all that being said, I'm 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 kind of with Vice Mayor Epps. I, I I can't quite vote for that just yet, with knowing some of the numbers and um, uh, you know I guess being a little more optimistic about the final numbers too at the, at the end of the year. Uh, so anyway, that's that's my two cents. Well, the city of Ca uh, Cookville, and in, in my experience. Uh, has always been very fiscally conservative and um, quite frankly as a taxpayer and talking to the middle income taxpayers of Cookville, Tennessee, not the folks that make six digit figure, uh, not six digit but I can't even add up that far how many digits that <laughs> is but way above my pay grade um, generally speaking, the overall feeling that I get from the middle class is the sense that we need to stay ahead little bit by little bit and not hit the constituents or, or the, the people of Cookville with a huge tax raise in two, three years or, you know, whatever. And... Um, I, you know, the cost of getting your garbage picked up has increased just exactly like the milk at your grocery store has increased. These things have continued to go up. And we are very proud of the services that we provide in the city of Cookville, and we want to continue that. And a few years ago, when the economy really dumped, you know, the first year I was in council, it was like, whoopee, we've got all this money. And the second year was when the economy went south and the city of Cookville tightened its belts, kept everybody at the same rate of service. Folks took no pay raises. And I just, quite frankly, would rather 
as a taxpayer, see small increments along the way rather than come down and be four or five years and have a huge increase. Um, Mr. Davidson, could you give me the figures or give us the figures on what that um, five cent increase would be on folks who own a $100,000 home? On a $100,000 home, it's going to be around $12. Okay. On a $300,000 home, it'll equate to roughly $38. Okay. I'd like you finish. I'm done. Okay. My turn. At this time. <laughs> uh, I've just written some comments. Uh, Cookville is growing, and it's our job to realize that services will need to grow and improve with the city's growth. Cookville is no longer a small town and has emerged into a micropology. The city's budget for the last three years has been based on no growth in sales tax and no increase in property tax, which I think was the wise thing to do based on the economy during this period. We, uh, we cannot always wait for the, uh, for the state or federal government to offer some type of funding or grant uh, that we can make any improvements or at least maintain what we already have. We need to and should have improvements for our future agendas and we should be proactive in our decisions. Therefore, I'm voting for this budget, a five, five uh, cent increase to the city property tax. This will allow for a three percent pay increase for city employees who have not had any significant pay increase in quite a while and will allow the city to buy some much needed equipment. The five cent increase will on average affect the city homeowners by two dollars or less per month. So I think the impact for, the, for asking for this is going to be minimal uh, and I think it should be done. It's the right thing to do. Thank you. Well, it's my turn. I think the thing that concerns me the most um, whenever we look at our 30,435 population here in the city of Cookville, but we serve our, as a region about 350,000 approximately. <coughs> and when we cannot keep enough police officers because they are leaving and going someplace where they can make more money or firefighters or um, and we do need to increase people in public works to help with, with different situations such as over at Dogwood Park and things like that. We need to make sure with the dog route, the, the hog rally and, and um, all the different things that are coming into our community that yes are bringing more sales tax revenue to us. We need to have that protection, the police protection, fire protection and everything to go along with that. And if we can do the, sur or the study, the salary study that we had talked about uh, which I believe is probably is in this budget and then take a look at that see where we are how we fit with other communities our size uh, we will need probably at least five cents raise and if not more and so I just I feel like that this is the time to, to get started on that uh, let's be proactive and not reactive thank you anything else <clears throat> from anyone questions comments from the audience please come forward state your name and if you could keep it to three minutes that would be great John Bach, uh, and all Mr. Bach would you go to the microphone, microphone. yeah so microphone, we, microphone yeah. The podium there so they can hear you on television yeah we got oh, a, oh wait a minute no yeah we're recording this uh, so are we really that way we can hear you if you're talking <laughs> okay to uh, just kidding about the slumlord thing. Mm -hmm. But anyway, big <laughs> landlord in town, try to provide so. decent, affordable housing. I'd like to, to see the city do <clears throat> more for less. I go all around the city, and I see where two or three guys are doing what maybe, or three guys are doing what two guys would be doing, or what one of my guys could be doing what it takes two or three city workers to do. And so I think we can make some cutbacks there. And, and with some of that savings, we can go ahead and pay our policemen a little bit more and some of these other folks a little bit more. We can use more subcontractors. If we got a big old hog event, 
Let's hire some extra security for that. Or the, the Jehovah Witnesses come in here, whatever. Let's hire and subcontract some of this stuff out to uh, private services. The city employees do not need to do, and county employees don't need to do everything for the city. We can save lots of money by using private services, pay them, and those people will give you more for your money than city employees will. Enough. Thank you, Mr. Bach. Thank you. But can I make an observation? My yeah, my yes, daughter sir. and her husband just bought a new house in a in a sub in a one of the satellite communities in Nashville, a different, <coughs> different city, and they have to pay substantial amount of money every every month to pick up their garbage once a week, and the people in the city don't have to do that, and that what they have to pay is much more than this tax increase that the council is talking about, and that's just a hidden service that we have that people here don't have to have to bear that burden. So I, I think that. Other people in other communities pay all kinds of fees that we take for granted here in Cookville. Thank you. Anything else from the audience? Uh, and and I, I just want to underline one other thing. Uh, Vice Mayor Epps and I, we, uh, we're completely for the 3% increase Absolutely. in uh, 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 you know, uh, cost of living increase for the employees and completely for figuring out how to pay our employees better. So. I don't want anybody to think that we're voting. We're voting for the budget. We think we can get all that done without raising the tax. So that's what we're getting at. So don't want to think anybody to think we're, we're against that. So, all right. All that being said, everyone vote. Three yes votes, <coughs> two no. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. On to item nine. Hold a public hearing and consider on first reading ordinance 120612. Authorizing appropriations for financial aid to public service, nonprofit, and charitable organizations for the 2012 2013 fiscal year. Sponsors, Mr. Mike Davidson. Mayor and Council members, uh, in your packets and on the screen, we have the uh, appropriations to nonprofits and the joint ventures. Uh, I show the, uh, the actual funding that was awarded uh, in fiscal year 2011 as well as 12 along with what was requested for uh, fiscal year 2013. But what I'm going to do real quick is just run through the ordinance and outline uh, for each agency the amount that's included in the ordinance. And for the uh, Putnam County Library, it's $325,000. For the Cookwell Senior Citizen Center, $47,530. Upper Cumberland Regional Airport is $28,000. $130,000 would be allocated to the Chamber of Commerce, $25,400 for the Emergency Management Agency, $32,417 for Cityscape, $18,608 for Cookwell Arts Council, $1,900 for the Cumberland Arts Society, $45,589 for the Tennessee Rehabilitation Center, $9,000 for the Cookville Putnam County Clean Commission, 11407 for Genesis House, 11407 for Helping Hands of Putnam County, 10000 for WCTE TV, 2377 for the H.J. Stevens Center for Child Abuse, 6000 for Kids Putnam, uh, 10000 for the Putnam County Imagination Library, and $1,901 for the Upper Cumberland Human Resources Agency for the Meals on Wheels program, $7,500 for the Upper Cumberland Human Resource Agency for the Upper Cumberland Drug Court, and we have $1,500 for uh, the Upper Cumberland Human Resources uh, Court Appointed Special Advocates program, $1,500 for the Cookwood Children's Museum, $4,000 for the Upper Cumberland Child Advocacy Center, $6,769 for the Tennessee Central Heritage Rail Trail project and $8,000. This is a new uh, award for a nonprofit, $8,000 for the Putnam County Veterans Organization. Uh, some of the funding, just to point out, in this nonprofit uh, list, uh, the $6,769 for the Heritage Rail, Rail Trail program is coming from the Quality of Life Fund. And then of the 130,000 for the chamber. 50 of that would be designated for the Highlands Initiative. 50 would be designated for the Sports Council. And that, that, those two feet, that $100,000 is coming from the Economic Development Fund. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Do I have a motion for approval? 
So moved. Second. Questions, comments from the council? Oh. Questions, comments from the audience? All right. Seeing none, all vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Item 10, hold a public hearing and consider on first reading Ordinance 120613, make appropriations for the various funds, departments, and agencies of the City of Cookville for the 2012-2013 fiscal year. Sponsors, Mr. Mike Davidson. Mayor and Council members, I have a number of slides uh, to go through. I'll be as quick as I can. Stop me at any point when you have a question, uh, but I'll try to move through them as quickly as I can. This, uh, this proposed budget for appropriations in the general fund is based off the five cent property tax increase. So right now, just to kind of give you a quick summary, it includes $22,626,220 in operating revenue. There's $350,000 that right now is budgeted uh, as a contribution from CRMC for the 7th Street project. $141,000 that we have requested from E911 to help with uh, converting our uh, two-way radio systems over to a digital system for the city. Uh, forces. Uh, also inside of this is reserve funds, $27,004, which was confiscated. Uh, it's proceeds from conf confiscated weapons that were sold by the police department. That money would be used for the conversion to the digital radio system. It includes $6,769 in transfer in from the Quality of Life Fund, again, for the rail trail project, uh, $50,000 for the Highlands Initiative, and $50,000 for the Sports <coughs> Council. That fifty, both of those coming out of the Economic Development Fund. So total revenue, when you factor all that in, is $23,250,993. We have budgeted operating expenditures of $21,073,368. Again, $730,555 in total to the nonprofits. Inside of this budget is also $1,285,955 in capital. Of that capital, 350 of that is the 7th Street Project, which is funded by the hospital. Uh, we have transfers out to other funds that we have, $3,000 for the tree board and $64,220 in uh, transfers for the animal control fund. All of this total expenditures $23,157,098. Based on that, it leaves us with a $93,000, $93,894 budgeted surplus. It includes some items that we've talked about. We've talked about different scenarios and different uh, budgets the last few weeks. It does include a 3% cost of living for uh, city employees. It does uh, have factored in additional monies for uh, fuel. Uh, not sure what's going to happen with gasoline. We have factored in that. Uh, it does include funding for the uh, compensation classification study to uh, get someone to look at city salaries and see what is, what is happening there. We think there are issues, especially in public safety, and we want someone to take a look at that. So it includes funding for that as well. Uh, it includes additional funding for utilities as well as it funds five new positions. It funds one in, uh, it funds three right-of-way crews, three people for mowing right-of-ways. We've annexed a lot over the last 10 years. We haven't added anybody to, to mow right away So it includes three positions for right-of-way crews. Those positions will not be filled until April of 2012, or 13. It includes an additional parks maintenance uh, employee to help with the uh, the various parks that we've opened up across the street, Dogwood Park, the different restrooms we have at Cinderella and up at the depot now. And it also includes another support services tech out at the recreation center for leisure services. Uh, in your packets is just a summary of all the capital. I'm not going to go through each one of those. I can tell you that uh, the capital is uh, exactly as we proposed it back in May. I have added snow removal equipment based off of the uh, Five, uh, five cent property tax increase. I went back in some equipment we've cut the last two years for public works. We've added that back in. That was basically uh, four salt bins that uh, fit in the dump trucks to help spread salt. We also, that was $55,000 that I added back into this capital budget. I added uh, two snow plows, which is another $40,000. And we also added uh, over at the South Jefferson substation the police substation we've been cutting uh, some needed repairs at that facility and that was ten thousand dollars and I've added that back in so the total and all the capital that's funded through the general fund is that one million two hundred eighty five thousand 
and $955. Again, <clears throat> based on the projected revenues and all the projected expenses that we have budgeted, we have a $93,894 budgeted surplus. Looking forward to June 30th, 2013, we have an estimated fund balance of $7.9 million. That's the general fund. I'm just going to move on through the rest of them unless you have questions. The rest of them I have very, I don't have many, many slides for you. I'm just going to run through the appropriations for State Street Aid. This has a budgeted revenue of $957,344 with uh, projected expenses of $953,000. Uh, $600,000 of that projected expenses is for paving around the city. Uh, we also have a grant that's part of the revenue factored into, into this budget, a grant to do sidewalks over on Jerry Whitson, Mississippi. That's a $203,000 project that's in this, uh, in this proposed budget as well. But total appropriations for State Street Aid, $953,947. Solid Waste Fund has a projected revenue of $1,447,000. The projected expenditures of one million seven hundred and two thousand. That's decreasing that fund balance two hundred and fifty-four thousand dollars, and projected to bring it down to three uh, three hundred twenty thousand dollar fund balance at June thirtieth of twenty thirteen. There are some capital expenditures we need to make. Uh, purchasing another side load sanitation truck. That's a two hundred sixty-five thousand dollar budgeted item along with trash carts at 35000 and service truck for the sanitation crew of 21000 and additional dumpsters of $80,000. Uh, we've had this fund balance as low as $260,000 in the past, so we're, we're comfortable with a $320,000 $320, fund balance. Next year we'll hold off on capital and start building that fund balance back up. Our animal control fund. Uh, has projected revenue of $195,120. Uh, potential bond proceeds of $900,000. The bond issue will be a, another discussion later with council regarding the uh, bond proposal, bond issue proposal. But I do have that factored into this budget. Uh, that $900,000 would be used toward the construction of an animal, the new animal shelter. Uh, so factoring that in along with their other operating expenditures, we have. Um, $1.6 million budget for the animal shelter. And primarily, the operating expenditures of that $1.6 million, $222,868 is the operating budget. We're looking at spending into that fund balance. They do have $488,000 in reserves from donations and bequeaths that have been setting in the animal control fund over the years to be applied toward that animal shelter, the new animal shelter as well. So. Potentially $1.3 million available to build that shelter. Not sure yet what that will cost, but we have uh, that's kind of the plan at this point to have that in place. And then we'll just see what, the, what transpires once we get into the design of this. The Economic Development Fund has a projected revenue of $1,957,000 with projected expenditures of $3,340,000. The majority of those expenditures were, were the Highlands Business Park, the new, the new road and the infrastructure that's being built out there. It's all being managed and handled through this fund. And we have the bond proceeds that were issued in December of 2010 are in this fund, and that's what's supporting uh, the construction of that uh, project. And that's, the primar that's primarily the majority of those expenditures. Uh, along with that, we have uh, expenditures for Lee Seminary Road, which are factored into that, but a total budget for Economic Development Fund of $3,440,000. Our Quality of Life Fund has projected revenue of $2,235,000. Now, that's kind of misleading because that's assuming the grant monies that we have been awarded for the construction of the rail trail project. It's all being managed through this fund. So as we construct the rail trail project, those grant funds will be reimbursed to the city, and that's factored into this budget. So those, re those revenue items are based on the, the grant proceeds. Uh, one penny of the tax rate goes to the Quality of Life Fund, which is roughly sixty-nine dollars to $70,000. So everything else of that revenue, that $2.2 million in revenue, is grant funds, projected grant funds. Uh, we have projected expenditures, $2,309,000. Hmm. 
our debt service fund, which is where we manage and cover the uh, interest and principal payments on all the city's bonded debt. We have projected revenue of $3,230,000. We have projected expenditures of $4,062,000, spending in budgeted a deficit of 832000 We have a current plan in place with our debt service fund. Is the fund balance, we're trying to keep that from dipping, don't let it dip below $1.5 million. And with the current debt that we have on the books and the plan that we have going forward for, for additional additional debt, you'll see that just looking at this graph, this is assuming, just to try to show you that, our, that we think our plan is working as we've got it designed, that we have uh, potential debt issues in, in this coming budget year of $3 million. Uh, possibly having to borrow to another 2.1 million in 2014 and another 5 million in 2015 and assuming those debts those bond amounts are issued over the next three years those amounts it still leaves us with 9.5 million dollars in debt capacity and if if we were to have to issue 9.5 million in 2016 you can still see that our fund balance does not get below that 1.5 million dollar threshold that we've set but we we do have debt variable rate debt that we pay we budget that on five percent the last uh two years that that rate has been below one percent so we've been able to add to this fund balance instead of decreasing the fund balance i still budget it on five percent because i don't know where that variable rates debt's going to go i'm hoping it that trend continues at below one percent and we'll be able to increase this fund balance again this year which will increase our debt capacity even more but a total Expenditures that are budgeted, $4,062,597. Okay. Uh, basically, in the water quality department, we have $13,738,000 in revenue that's budgeted. With proposed expenditures this fiscal year, $20,570,000. So spending into that cash reserves of over $4 million, leaving them with cash reserves of $6 million at the end of the year. Uh, the electric department has $56,497,000 in projected revenue with $57,248,000 in expected expenses. And their gas department has projected revenue of $9,495,000, projected expense, expenses of $9,318,000, uh, basically an $848,000 surplus, leaving them with over $13 million in cash for at the end of June 2013. Their employee health insurance fund is funded through premiums that are paid by the city on behalf of employees as well as the employees' contributions into that fund. It is a self-insured fund. We have projected revenue of $3,458,000 with projected expenses of three million six hundred forty nine thousand so projected spending into that fund one hundred ninety one thousand dollars that's got a couple more and i'll be finished i know <laughs> this is exciting uh our work comp liability fund has a projected revenue of five hundred fourteen thousand dollars with the projected expenses of five hundred twelve thousand and customer service is funded by the utilities, electric, gas, water, and sanitation. That has projected revenue, one million one sixty-two, and those same expense expenditures, one million one sixty-two, one seventy. And the drug fund has projected revenue, thirty-one million two fifty, with projected expenditures of thirty thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Tree board fund has projected revenue three mil three million three thousand five hundred forty dollars and projected expenses at three thousand three hundred twenty. And last but not least, is Cookwa Regional Medical Center. They've got three hundred one million seven hundred twenty eight thousand seven hundred eight dollars in projected expenditures for fiscal year twenty thirteen. And with that, I'll stop. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. <clears throat> Any questions, comments, or a motion for approval first? I moved. Second. All right. Any questions, comments from the council? I do have a question. I think I know the answer, but I think others might want to hear. <coughs> um, when we sit here and we see some of the the um, cash reserves 
that are projected up there, and people are wondering, you know, what you've got enough money, uh, why do you need these cash reserves? Uh, whenever you add all of these together, if we had a major catastrophe, how long would we be able to go operate the way we needed to with our cash reserves? Well, looking at the general fund, which funds police, fire, public works, the leisure services department, maintenance department, uh, as well as planning and codes, and then just the city general government, which keeps the street lights on and the traffic lights on. Mm -hmm. Looking at the general fund, that the projected fund balance of $7.9 million to $8 million. That's basically, a, it would allow us to operate for four months based on our current operating budget. Mm -hmm. We're trying to keep that at no less than three months of an operating budget. Mm -hmm. And right now at that level, it gives us uh, the ability to operate for four months uh, based on our current operating uh, budget. Uh, if things were just to go totally haywire, we would still have those reserves to fall back on. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the council? None. Questions, comments from the audience? All right. Seeing none, all vote. Three yes, two no. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Thank you. All right. We skip item 11, go on to item 12. <coughs> Consider approval of engineering contract for the design of the Bennett Road extension. Sponsors, Mr. Greg Brown. <coughs> Mayor and Council, uh, this contract is for the design uh, of the Bennett Road extension from the new interchange to Highway 70. Uh, this, the, this contract will cover the project management, uh, managing the LIC funds and the um, design of the road. Uh, this is a have to follow TDOT designs on this, so they'll do all of that, prepare bid notices, uh, advertisements uh, during the construction, they'll provide cons uh, construction administration, and any other service we need to get the job built. It also includes field uh, field engineer or surveying, basically anything that we need to do to get the, the road designed. Uh, what will not does not include, uh, which we will negotiate later after the design is done, which we will find out more what we need, any geotechnical evaluations we'll need, uh, any environmental studies, uh, purchase of right-of-way, uh, pr preparation of any legal sketches or the uh, showing what property we would need for the road. Also, the construction administration and the inspection will be uh, negotiated then as well. The contract amount is $563,300, which was close to what we expected it to be, and I would request your approval. Do I, thank you, Mr. Brown. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Questions, comments from the council? Who's the, who was the contract? I'm sorry. The contract was wiser. Wiser Company in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I was wondering if I just didn't hear that. I wasn't sure. I was thinking, Man, did he say that? I, we, kinda, we knew it. We heard that in the work session, but I knew, I'm sorry, I I knew you wanted a chance to yeah. make sure that they, everybody knew who Thanks for company. pointing that out. Do you, do you mind just to kind of tell everybody how we came to that or how you guys came to that decision? Because, I mean, it was something that wasn't just looked at at a couple of different papers. And no, we had a committee of uh, seven Good people, point. I believe, and we came up with, some, I think, ten criteria. And uh, with a scale on value for each one, and everybody took uh, the proposals that we have from about seven different engineering firms, and uh, everybody looked at them independently and rated the ones that uh, what they what they thought the, how good a job they could do. Uh, came back together, everybody looked at them had it after we had totaled them. Uh, we had two that were real close that we couldn't really decide on. We invited those two to make a presentation. After that presentation, the committee voted, and uh, the Wiser Company was the one that was chosen. And the reason I wanted you to to say that is because I was I was impressed by the way it was handled. It, it you know it wasn't a bunch of people sitting around a room talking about well I like this one and this one. I mean, we went over the criteria, you handed out the packets to everybody. They went home or wherever it is they go to study, and and they went over these proposals and came back, and it was almost unanimous at least the top two. 
Yes. That's uh, and then and then brought everybody in, brought those two in for an, an interview, face to face, and then it, the decision was made from that point. And it, again, even when it got to that point, it was almost it was overwhelming majority. Uh, it wasn't unanimous, but it was it was a easy right. decision, I think. All right. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be one of the seven uh, in taking these proposals home and studying this. I, I imagine I spent about two hours one night reading thoroughly, then grading these on a scale of one to ten, then coming back and finding the other six members came up with the same two that I did. Then when we got down to the two and they came in and did the interview and PowerPoint presentation, uh, I believe the Wisner group came in strongest because of their uh, con uh, ability to deal with TDOT. And my feeling was that they had the best people that could do the right-of-way acquisition, the most expertise of the two. Uh, the engineering and the construction I thought would be relatively straightforward considering the terrain. That the two, uh, engineering firms would be fairly equal in that process, but uh, I weighed more heavily with Weisner's ability and experience with TDOT. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the council? Anything from the audience? Yes, sir. Follows, I may. My name is Brian Paddock. I'm an attorney. Uh, Cookville Area Residents Association uh, has been concerned with this northern connector uh, from the beginning and I wanted to just comment briefly to the council uh, before it makes the first major dollar expenditure going this direction and eventually has to issue bonds and spend a lot of money on constructing this. I went back and reviewed the interchange justification studies and uh, the original justification that TDOT offered to the federal government to connect something to the Interstate 40 was done in 2000 and it basically was based on the theory that corridor K was going to jump off north uh, of this connector uh, and come up to 70 and go, so go across someplace and you're going to have this northern bypass and as we all know um, corridor K was rerouted and no northern bypass was ever approved and in fact in the interim TDOT did a study which proved that it would be uh, not only economically not positive but economically disadvantageous to the city to build that kind of a of a northern bypass um, I've always thought that was just common sense that people would drive around the city and not <coughs> stop and spend their money um, so in 2010, TDOT commissioned a revised uh, what's called an inter interchange justification study. And um, the, the assumption in that study, assumption was that there would be a northern connector uh, construction started by no later than 2018. That justification study, in fact, does not specifically promise a connector or promise it sooner than 2018. That was what was submitted to the federal government and in September, according to the press, of 2010, uh, there was a big ceremony. I guess some of you may have been there and it was announced that the federal government had approved this interchange. That interchange, by the way, has been modified in design. It originally was to be a sort of a half um, cloverleaf system with only the loops inside the cloverleaf on the south side uh, and not on the north side. Now it's just a straight diamond. Uh, and I'll come back to that design question in just a moment. But uh, I've been asking TDOT uh, in writing now for a couple of weeks to come up with the approval letter so I could see if what's been told to you that the Federal Highway Administration is insisting on this northern connector or insisting on it in some certain time frame appears anywhere in writing. And I've sent a Federal Freedom of Information Act to the Federal Highway Administration, which it has not answered. I've sent a written request to TDOT, which has said that uh, they're looking. They're looking for the paper. They haven't found it yet. Um, I did find uh, one thing. I found something that should be here in our local courthouse. Unfortunately, I found out about it late enough today from TDOT that I wasn't able to look for it. When you all did the condemnation to get part of the area that was desired for the uh, business park, 
uh, there was a litigation, and it was the Putnam County and the city of Cookville versus Norma Fay Piles Lynch, uh, and that was that uh, area where there were a couple of different members of the family, and there was a dispute and so forth, and, and ultimately the city prevailed in a condemnation to acquire that area. In the course of that litigation, a TDOT official named Steve Allen, who was the project planning division director for TDOT, uh, submitted an affidavit. And he said he was attaching to it the 2000 approval, because he did this in 2008, the 2000 approval from um, the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, so TDOT sent me his affidavit by email. But they forgot to include the attachments. No letter from Federal Highway Administration. Nothing that tells us what the Federal Highway Administration is actually saying. So. Right now, you're faced in a situation where you're about to spend five, over half a million dollars, and you've been told by TDOT, but as far as I know, no one has ever seen the Federal Highway Administration approvals that actually say that northern connector has to be built or has to be built within a certain time frame, and yet you're being told by TDOT, you've got to get this engineering done because unless you put your money on the line and start this project, uh, we're not we're not going to, uh, to go ahead with this uh, interchange, uh, and they do offer a small cost share toward the northern connector. I think one of the things that's at play here, and you all should be aware of this, I don't know if you've ever looked at the design information on that interchange. It's going to be the biggest interchange on I-40 in the entire Cookville area. It's going to be two bridges over I-40, each of which is three lanes wide. The connecting ramps are all going to be double lane ramps for most of their length. In other words, there's a gigantic interchange. Now that's only justifiable uh, if you're going to have some kind of a huge road to the north. And that's why you have been pressed, and I know your, your, your staff has done an excellent job in pushing back with TDEC to make that a smaller road, albeit limited access. But uh, TDOT is obviously interested in spending uh, its money and federal money in a, in a huge interchange, which can only be justified if there's somehow um, a lot of traffic to the north. I've heard uh, people say that there's not going to be any need for that road uh, literally in our lifetimes. And yet the traffic projections, which TDOT adopted, notwithstanding its earlier finding that, that a road to the north was not economically advantageous to the city, call for 20,000 trips north and south on that road every day. That's what was told to the Federal Highway Administration. Now, I just ask you to consider that this is, this is part of the system that's driving you to a premature annexation of this area. It's driving you then to a premature plan of services and having to fulfill that in terms of infrastructure and services. And quite frankly, until I, if, if I were you and it were my half million dollars, I would not reach into my pocket and do that until I had sat down with the Federal Highway Administration and said, why do we have to do this? And if we have to do it, when do we really have to do it? We do not have this money now. We don't want to do it now. We don't want to use up our debt capacity. And we certainly don't see a need for this north, this north side of the, uh, of the interchange um, to be so gigantic as, as it is being planned. So I would ask that the council defer granting this funds and undertaking the engineering on this until it's really sure that it has to do this. It looks to me, quite frankly, from the non-response that I'm getting from TDOT on, on showing me what the Federal Highway Administration requirements are, that, um, that TDOT is, uh, it appears to me, and, and I hate to say this, uh, that they're making this up that the feds didn't require this. The feds may want eventually some kind of a small northern connection, but that the feds have never said, you've got to do this, you've got to do this now, you have got to start doing your engineering now. And I, I would satisfy myself that in fact this was a federal requirement someplace in writing. And I would ask, as I think you have, Representative Black to help you set aside any federal requirement if in fact one is found, because just like the federal government doesn't want to spend money that's unnecessary, we don't, and I think she would help us back off, or should help us back off the Federal Highway Administration from requiring 
something that this community doesn't want and doesn't want to pay for. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Paddock. Yes, sir. Please state your name, and if you could keep it to three minutes, that would be great. Danny Newton. Uh, I think you could have heard most of this if at the uh, last meeting that they had for, with the Planning Commission, except for the three-minute deal. But I've also been at, uh, talking to TDOT and trying to figure out why is it that they've got these connectors all over this state and uh, nobody's ever thrown in a dollar. Example, O'Neill Road in Cock County. Um, Exit 263 on I-40 in uh, Loudoun County, which, by the way, is the real Highlands Industrial Park, the real original one before we got one. And uh, I, I've written to TDOT, and I said, how much uh, uh, public money went in on this thing? And, they, and you can look it up on their website, you know, and double-check it. But uh, some of these records go back so far, they don't keep them on the Internet anymore. Uh, there was one in uh, Wilson County, very similar to it. Now, the one up in Cock County, that was 50 cars a day, and it was a gravel road. And, and the one up in, uh, on exit 362, that, that thing uh, crosses I-40 and dead ends on a body of water. It looks like it's a boat ramp to me. Although, just before you go down there, they, they do have an industrial park there. And they, they've, they've waited five years, and they finally got a VW uh, uh, distributor to set up there. But they're not going to make enough money off that. I'm talking about TDOT. The state's not going to make, make enough money to get the $18.3 million back. And so, you know, basically, I'm after TDOT. I'm, I'm saying that it's irresponsible to spend this money and it's even more irresponsible to spend somebody else's money on something that will never recover the cost. And, and, and there's, there's examples of this all over the state. And I don't, for the life of me, I don't, of course, you don't invite me to go to these meetings with TDOT. But why don't, why don't you point this stuff out when you sit down with TDOT? That's my question. Thank you. Anything else? Any other questions? I would like to point out that Ms. Melinda Kiefer and I and Mr. Brown did negotiate uh, this contract with this company, and it does provide that the city can terminate this at any reason, at, without cause for any reason, without owing any money except what work is done. And we have things graduated in a schedule, so if this should end early, uh, it would be a minimal cost to the city. So that, that is in the contract. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trader and Ms. Kiefer. All right, any other questions? Seeing none, all vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item 13, consider awarding bid for chemicals, Water Quality Control Department, sponsor Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, we recently opened our annual bid for chemicals that we use at the water plant and uh, a little bit of chemicals we have down at the wastewater plant. Uh, I've got the bid tab in your packet. We'd recommend the low bidder meeting spec and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions, comments from the council? Seeing none, all vote. Five yes votes. <clears throat> motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. All right, this is a portion of our meeting where we open the floor to the hearing of citizens and or delegations. Uh, if anyone would like to come forward, we'll listen. If you could keep it three minutes, that would be greatly appreciated. All right. Anything from the council? I just wanted to remind people of the concerts in uh, the park on Sunday afternoons. I don't have a list of all of those, but they're in the afternoon, and they're usually in the Herald Citizen and on the radio, and also the community band is uh, performing throughout the summer in Dogwood Park and uh, those are well attended and quite a nice event to go to free of charge and a uh, good way to spend your Sunday afternoon or your Monday evening if you go to the community band. 
Also, this Saturday, you've got wine on the west side. Yes. So. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to get to that. You better. <laughs> Uh, yes, the Live Green 5K, WCTE Live Green 5K is Saturday morning at 7.30. Uh, it's the inaugural event. Uh, looking for a lot of runners. Uh, we have a lot of good goodie bags, I know. I think there's 48 or 50 people already signed up. Uh, you can still sign up online, uh, and you can come Saturday morning from 6.30 to 7 to sign up. Pretty sure. Uh, but anyway, it should be a, a good run, whether it'll be before it gets too hot. So come out and support local public television. And also, there's some goodies in there, I think, to the local farmer's market that they're going to be giving away. Uh, so the run will go right in front of the farmer's market. So on your way back, circle back, and you can purchase something at the farmer's market. Um, one thing I was going to read real quick, uh, you know, a lot of times we, we hear a lot of the negative uh, about government and or city employees or whatever uh, but we had a letter sent uh, to Mr. Jim Shipley about one of our employees and so I want to read at least part of it because uh, it was a very complimentary letter and I think it deserves to be read uh, I meant to read it at the last meeting and I uh, apologize I forgot but this is uh, dear Mr. Shipley I'm writing to let you know what a pleasant experience I had today in a phone conversation with your senior planner Mr. Kenneth Young and I noticed he left <laughs> I wish he would have stayed uh, I phoned him I phoned him to request some information about a property and he shocked me by bringing to my attention information that could greatly benefit me and my family it took several minutes for him to do this. He cross-checked some maps and did some calculations on square footages and then patiently answered my questions and helped me. This is almost unheard of. He didn't have to go out of his way to research the information, and I didn't even know enough to ask the right question, but he took the initiative and showed he has a true servant's heart and helped me when 99 out of 100 people would have just ended the call and never given it a thought. I'm not going to read the next paragraph because it has a lot of his personal information so it says thank you and congratulations to you mr shipley for hiring him he is terrific i hope he stays with our cookful government for a long time anyway congratulations to mr kenneth young not only does mr ken young do a great job but the rest of the department heads and employees do a great job uh sometimes you guys don't get to hear that so uh we think you do an excellent job and we couldn't sit up here and do what we do without you guys every one of you so wanted that to be public knowledge that he got that he did that and it's not just ken everybody does that so anything else all right i have to rummage through all my cookful stuff here <laughs> meetings adjourned <laughs>